Mark, going into the weekend, we know you had a couple of injury concerns last week. Can we have an update on the likes of Pereira, Ridehalge and Romney Critchler? Uh, Dion and, uh, and Rom um, took part in training today. Um, we'll see if uh, Rom didn't take part in all of the session uh, uh, Dion did, but uh, we'll see. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, they don't get a reaction. Uh, Rides uh, wasn't with us, so he's at this point is is rolled out at the weekend. But uh, the other two, uh, there's a possibility they might be okay. We know, obviously, Brad will miss out due to suspension. Mm -hmm. But other than the three we've just mentioned, do you have any fresh concerns at all? No, no. Everybody else is uh, fitting well. Uh, trained really well this week. Uh, been really happy with the levels that we've hit. So. Uh, Looking forward to the game. Everybody is these days. Obviously, we're on a on the back of a good run, uh, playing well at home as well. Uh, we always enjoy playing at Valley Parade, so uh, it's another one back to back home games as well. It's a really opp real opportunity for us. Just a quick word on Manny Osadebi. Obviously, we're not expecting him any time soon, but it's been a while since we've heard about him. How's his progress coming along? Uh, yeah, he's, he's on track. Um, he's off crutches now. He's he's weight bearing, uh, so that's obviously a significant um, moment in his in his recovery. So uh, yeah, we see him around the place. He's uh, he's in every day. So uh, see his big beaming smile and uh, Jamie Walker. Um, he's he's progressing off the crutches as well. See him walking around unaided. So uh, yeah, they're all they're all on track. Um, so. Uh, Quite a bit of time before both of them are available, but um, yeah, I've touched with no no setbacks up to this point. Positive signs. Mm. Um, you mentioned the momentum there and and this good run of form and how everyone's looking forward to seeing your side play. Although we're still early on in the season, just how key is you just keep building that momentum and taking it as it comes? Yeah, we would want to have the ability to, to continue to get good positive results uh, the more we get the better we become in terms of confidence levels and uh, an understanding of what's required to, to get the job done so uh, the more games we win uh, the more understanding we have of of what works for us and, and what causes problems to, to opposition teams so uh, we're still coming together as a group I mean we've we had a huge influx of new players and uh, I think how they've been able to adapt and, and understand what I require of them and uh, the demands that uh, we'll place on them as a, as a club. I, I think they've done really, really well as a group to come together so so quickly. I think everybody um, gets the impression that they, they enjoy each other's company and, that, and that's exactly the case. And um, it, It's a great group to work with at the moment, so uh, um, I sense that they'll be really strong. Obviously, there'll be moments during the season when uh, we won't be as good or as confident in our play. I think that's an acceptance of that, but we've got to make sure those periods are shown, shown sharp and uh, we're able to turn things around and uh, the strength of the group will help us in that. You know them a lot better than us in this room. Has it surprised you at all how quickly they've gelled or did you always know it would happen? Well, you never know because until you actually work with people and, and bring them together as a group. You're never quite sure. You, you, you have a, a fair idea. You Obviously, we did a lot of due diligence on, in terms of their personality and speaking to people who've worked with the players uh, in the past. And uh, to a man, we had great reports on each and every one of them. So we sense that uh, we won't have too many problems in terms of um, integrating everybody. But you never know. You never know until they actually come together as a group, and uh, um, yeah, we've been pleasantly surprised. Um, it's listen, it's impossible for everyone in a group of twenty five, thirty adults to everybody to like everybody else, but uh, we've got the majority that do, so that's reassuring. Simon asked Matty earlier about um, you know looking at the league table during this form as a manager. Although it's it's a great period, isn't it? Do do you are you wary of keeping players' feet on the ground? If that makes sense. Um, no, I think we've got to celebrate uh, wins and and playing well. I think that's important. I think uh, you should always do that, uh, and that's what we do. But we don't get ahead of ourselves. We know there's a. Uh, a huge amount of work that we have to go through before we can achieve anything this year. So um, we're 
we're celebrating when we win. We we enjoy winning, um, but we understand that uh, there's a lot of hard work that has to go into to enable us to sustain it, sustain that winning feeling for the whole of the season. So uh, we're not under no apprehension that um, it's a huge task ahead of us, but we're capable of uh, of doing it. Uh, I think we all feel that, certainly in this period when we're playing confidently. Richie Smallwood was one of the faces that obviously came into the club and there was some people questioned, you know, playing at a higher level, how quickly will he adapt to playing in League Two? And the last few weeks he's really put some chips in, hasn't he? How how impressed have you been with Richie so far? Uh, really, really impressed, uh, not only in his general play, but his... Uh, is obviously his his leadership qualities, which we we wanted to bring to the club as well. He's uh, embraced the captaincy as we knew he would, and uh, and he's made a real uh, difference in terms of obviously bringing the group together, which we needed from him because, as we've already mentioned, lots of new faces coming into a new group, and we need somebody to just pull that all together. And uh, he's done a great job in that regard, uh, off the field, and his and his work on the field is. Exceptional at the moment as well. So um, yeah, we're pleased. Um, you, you mentioned that people question whether or not you'd be able to play at a different level. Um, I had no worries in terms of that. Uh, he's a quality player. He's he's used to having responsibility uh, on his shoulders and uh, playing and carrying that responsibility. And um, he hasn't surprised me at all. Um, he's exactly what I hoped he would be. He's certainly got a lot of praise from uh, another former City captain in Gary Jones when he's alongside us. On on leaders, there's there's obviously Rich, and we, we've heard what you've said about that. Do, do you feel you've got leaders all around the squad in the dressing room? Yeah, I think it's uh, becoming more evident. Um, some will be more vocal and, and lead that way, but others, are, we've got a lot that lead by example. And um, that's a good thing, I think. The group now, whoever comes into the first 11, the, the starting 11, um, knows that they've got a challenge because there's good quality in the group. But uh, I think that's that's a challenge good players take on board and, uh, and run with because that enables them to be uh, playing at a higher level uh, because they know they've got quality behind. And um, the leadership that you need to show is not just... Uh, on the shoulders of the captain, it's on on everybody's shoulders. We we've got to recognise and and understand when things go against us. Sometimes in games, that that's when leadership comes to the fore, and it's it's not a case of just having one leader. We have to have everybody leading uh, at any given time when it when required. And I sense that's building now. We we're getting more of that uh, as players get to know each other and and understand what what's required and. Um, I'm really pleased with that aspect, uh, how it's growing. Uh, I think along with everything else we're doing, that, that leadership within the group is, is really strong. Back to Saturday and another home game. We know how much you enjoy them, Mark. Mm -hmm. Wimbledon coming to town obviously had a really difficult season last season, not started as well as they maybe would have hoped. Only a couple of wins in the league so far. It's, I guess for you, it's a great chance to keep that winning run going, really. Well, it's, it's important for us. Um, Obviously, another home game on the back of a really strong performance last time out. So, uh, uh, I suspect it will be a different challenge because they play in a different way. Um, try and, and play and, and progress up the field um, predominantly with good movement and good passing. And uh, so, it's a different, different scenario that we're facing. But that's what League Two. Uh, throws at you um, any given Saturday you can be up against a completely different formation and, and approach so um, that's the challenge to us that we're able to adapt and make sure that our play is consistent and enables us to win the game. And Johnny Jackson your opposite number on Saturday early in his manager career but spent time at Charlton which is a big club within itself. D do you know Johnny at all? Have you come across Not personally Johnny? no no but uh, obviously he's uh, He's progressing well in his in his managerial career, and that tells you that clubs have confidence in, in his ability when they've worked with him. So that enables him to continue to get jobs. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot of good young coaches that are 
finding their way at this level and uh, usually they throw up things that uh, maybe you don't see on a regular basis just because they they have that um, I know willingness or freedom to do that but uh, sometimes that gets taken out of you quite readily if you start losing games so you've got to be a little bit more pragmatic but uh, um, he wants his teams to play in a certain way and that's credit to him Thanks for your time No problem when you look at a, a, a team at the, the stage you are at the moment in the season, and obviously you've got a big squad, and nobody wants to see anyone get injured, but this is the chance they are for players to to get their chance in, in the team, isn't it? Well, yeah, we we will lose. I've always said at the beginning of the season that this is the reason why we've got a big squad, because we know through the course of the year we will drop players uh, out of the team because of injuries, suspensions uh, and the like. That's that's a given. So uh, what we've got, we feel this year is real strength that uh, when we do lose players, then players coming in are of the similar stature and uh, ability and, and that enables us to, to keep the strength in in that start in 11. And um, I think it's, it's a real advantage for us, I, I think. In comparison, certainly from last year, I think it was more difficult to keep the the level high if we lost key players out of the, the side. Uh, um, this year, I think everybody's seen that I've changed things around and, and guys have come in, done well, gone out of the team again. Someone else has come in, done well. And I think it's just keeping everybody on their toes. Clearly, we've got a, a spine through the team that we try and keep predominantly... Uh, sound and, and in position but uh, for the most part uh, certainly in attacking areas with the options we've got we can swap things around we can um, introduce players later on in games or we can start them um, they still are having impacts for us so uh, yeah I'm pleased with the options I've got. There must be something that you've seen throughout your career not just as a player but also as a manager that the amount of footballers that are played the squad has become far more important than the team almost. Yeah, I just think it's it's unreasonable or unrealistic to to expect to to go with a smaller squad. Ideally, on a day to day basis, if if you knew and you could guarantee that you could keep everybody fit and well and and everybody retain the enthusiasm and and confidence in their play and there's no loss of form, then you would go with smaller numbers just because it's more manageable and. Uh, in numbers, in terms of training, it's it's less complicated involving everybody. But the reality is, is that you, it's very rare that you go through a season uh, just keeping a small squad that that can maintain their levels right through the season without any suspensions or injuries. So that's why you've got to go with bigger numbers, and uh, that's what we we're doing. We've already lost key players to significant injuries already, and we're, what are we? We're only nine eight nine games into the season so um it just backs up the point that i'm trying to make is that you're gonna to have to have a bigger squad to to cope with that do you ever look ahead at fixtures that are coming up and think i definitely want that player playing there so i might rest him from this game yeah i think i've done that i think i've done that already certainly uh ryan east and scotty banks i, I did that too in, in recent games I, I think it's important that Certainly, the younger element of our squad is um, is not shielded from certain types of game. That that's the wrong. It just just we need at times to protect that confidence level that we built up with good performances and everybody who's I, I give the example of Eastley and Banksy. They've done really well. Um, but then we take them out and just make sure that um, any dip in form isn't. A lasting one. It's just temporary, and, and they get back to the levels very quickly. So, uh, um, we'll continue to do that. I'll continue to mix things up. Clearly, we we don't want to disrupt things too radically because that can have a detrimental effect on on the team. But um, I certainly think uh, I can continue in the same vein. I think it it'll help the players. I've been in squads, bigger squads, and uh, sometimes I didn't appreciate it as a player because. Most players work exceptionally hard during the week and they want an outlet for, for their efforts in the week. And if you're not giving them that outlet, then they can get frustrated. But certainly, even though I was disappointed when I wasn't playing, I knew 
I was ready to go a full tilt the very next opportunity. So uh, um, that's what the players have got to recognise and, and understand, and I, and I think they do, in fairness. Yes, you say, Mark, about obviously, you know, the, 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 the leaders in the group and, and that, that, that mentality side. Also, the fact that you've got players in there who've achieved, you know, mm. one one promotion, they've won things. Mm. Is that important as well? Because presumably they can sort of see the long, the long, the bigger picture sort of thing. Yeah, I think you're right uh, to highlight that. Yeah, we uh, we've got experience in in terms of uh, promotion pu pushes, and and I, I'm sure I, I'll tap into that uh, closer to the end of the season, where maybe hopefully uh, the intention is to be there at the end, and and we'll tap in to the knowledge that the guys who've been there and done it, uh, what their experience was like and what their recollection of in terms of what was important and what wasn't uh, that time. And uh, we can use that knowledge. And, and we're seeing it on a daily basis even now that it's it's important that we, we do the right things. Um, but it can be small margins, um, a little detail in, in games, in preparation, uh, something might trigger something or a situation might trigger something in somebody's uh, mind who's who's been through a promotion season and uh, that might help us further down the line. And also presumably with some of the younger players, the less experienced ones, others who, you know, if, if they have a little blip or they're, they're out the team or whatever, they can say, look, this happened to me in yeah, 2019. Absolutely. Or whatever yeah, you, like, yeah, I think I'm pleased with, with the mix of what we've got. We've got good experience, we've got... Guys who've, who've been at good levels and uh, experienced good moments in the game, but those guys have experienced negatives, negatives uh, as well as some younger players that we have. Uh, probably it's just an upward curve at the moment. So um, yeah, there will come times where it, it, they'll get disappointed, but uh, that's football and that's a football career. It's not always uh, one trajectory. Uh, easy for me to say, but um, you got to go take the. The, the highs and the lows and um, react accordingly. So uh, we've got good, like I said, touched on it already, good leadership in the group and good senior lads that will get around younger players if they feel they're still struggling with any aspect of the game. I'm not sure if you're one of these managers who divides the season into blocks, but obviously this is the 10th game. Should you win it, 20 points, averaging two points a game in the first 10 games, is that is that sort of where you want to be or was it ahead of schedule, do you think? Or? Well, I think we're we're comfortable where where we we are at the moment, um, because of the amount of new faces and the amount of change in terms of the playing squad. But uh, uh, in the past, I've I've given points tallies. I've broken up season into more manageable bits, usually leading into international weeks. I'd I just see who we had and give guys a realistic points target, usually minimum requirements I used to give them, but I'm done it on this occasion. Um, probably be a little bit unfair on them, so uh, moving forward, I might reintroduce it towards the end of the season, who knows. Presumably, as you say, with, with so many players coming in, the, the sort of slowish start to the season is probably almost understandable to a degree, because obviously there's a lot of players getting used to, mm. it, to playing. Yeah, yeah. Themselves. yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they've, I think, just enjoyed the process of getting to know each other in turn on the field and, and off the field and uh, and it's growing we're, we're getting better we've, we're, we're a group now that enjoys e each other's company and the, the way we we really behave I think is is, is good I'm, I'm pleased with the characters in the group and uh, yeah um, we've had a start that is understandable, uh, certainly in the opening few games, but now we we seem to be getting into our stride, so it's, it's important we try and continue. And obviously in terms of Wimbledon, you've got the sort of Mr Wimbledon alongside you, but presumably the, the club has completely changed in terms of personnel since, since Glenn was there in 2020-21. Yeah, yeah, it would have done it, but that's the turnover of, of players, and obviously when you have a relegation season, that's... That changes the club as well. So um, maybe they're getting a few, are just suffering from a few scars from that, that season they've just had. So uh, uh, we'll have to make sure that it's a good time to play them. Um, we don't want them to have an uplift in, in form um, going away from Valley Parade. It's up to us to make sure um, any upturn in their form occurs after they've played us. I was going to say, in terms of obviously the very difficult second half season they had last year and, and the fact they not been an easy start for them. I mean, 
presumably there are, as you say, scars or potential wounds there that you can exploit in terms of if you can get on top of them. Yeah, I mean, they, they would have preferred, obviously, clearly, and I would have hoped for a, for a better start to the season, given they've, they've come down from a, a higher level. But um, it's difficult. The League Two is, is not a cakewalk. It's, uh, there's good teams, strong teams, physical teams, technical teams. There's, there's everything in, in League Two, and uh, you've got to face every challenge head on. And um, as soon as you, the sooner you get to grips with that, the better. The better for yourself.